Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, Father David Egan here. Today's March uh, 22nd, uh, Monday, and I'll be reflecting on uh, today's gospel reading. I'm coming to you live from the uh, from the car today. Um, I'm not going to read the gospel today, but if you'd like to read it yourself or look it up and and you know uh, meditate with it, contemplate it, um, it's from the Gospel of John, chapter eight, verses one through eleven. Uh, but I do think that there are you know, a few takeaways from today's gospel, in particular three lessons, uh, three things we can take away that I'd like to share with everyone today. Uh, the gospel passage, by the way, was about the woman caught in adultery. Famous story, I think we're all familiar with it. One of the first lessons, uh, takeaways that we can get from it is that our initial emotion towards anyone who has sinned or anyone who has made a mistake should be pity and compassion, not judgment. Uh, to realize, yes, they've messed up, but so do I, and therefore I should be compassionate towards them. And our sins are certainly different from one another. Uh, I don't have the same sins as other people. Other people don't have the same sins as me. And our sins may even be lesser in gravity than other people's. But Jesus gave us an example to follow in our gospel today of how to treat the sins of other people. Uh, we should show mercy rather than harsh judgment. Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Uh, Jesus's initial reaction wasn't to be judgmental, but to be compassionate. And that's coming from a man who had never even sinned. So some something there to take away. Secondly, what we see in our gospel today is that God humbles the proud, but lifts up the lowly. The lowly. Throughout uh, all of the gospels, uh, parts of the gospels, and much of the scriptures, uh, this theme is repeated over and over again. God humbling the proud, but lifting up those who are humble, lifting up those who are lowly. Uh, one of the things that a question people often ask is, what did Jesus write on the ground with his finger in this gospel? And one traditional interpretation is that Jesus wrote down the sins of the people who were accusing the women, beginning with the proudest, the most self-righteous, the elders, uh, which is why that's described in today's gospel. At one point it says that Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. You now, if we're willing to publicly expose the sins of others, be cautious. We have a God who humbles the proud, but lifts up the lowly. The next time I think that we want to be judgmental of someone, whether it's privately or publicly, imagine Jesus bringing up every one of our worst and most embarrassing sins in a public setting. Maybe that will soften our hearts a little bit. And then thirdly, uh, takeaway is that we see Jesus's attitude towards sin in our gospel today. Uh, it's easy, I think, to draw the wrong lesson from this passage altogether to think, well, everyone's a sinner, so what we do, right or wrong, doesn't really matter that much. Uh, the only thing that matters is that we're not judgmental of one another. That's true, we shouldn't be judgmental of one another, but that's not the takeaway of our gospel. Uh, Jesus was merciful. He was forgiving. Yes, he protected and shielded this woman from being stoned to death, but he never approved of sin. He didn't treat this woman's sin as if it didn't matter. He told her, go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. That should be our attitude, especially in the confessional, to be thankful of God's mercy, to be thankful for his forgiveness, to accept it, but also to realize that just because God forgives, just because he's patient, just because he's merciful, it doesn't mean that God is indifferent towards sin. He wants us to live in the light. He wants us to sin no more. And so those are the three takeaways of the day. First, to have pity toward the sinner rather than to be initially judgmental. Secondly, to be humble, lest God publicly humbles us. And then thirdly, to take Jesus' command to heart, to see how God treats sin. He says, go and sin no more. May you all have a blessed day, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.